Good morning to you all. Welcome to Linda Sue Plants for you. Um, this is probably going to end up being a rather lengthy video. So for those of you that don't care for long videos, I'm just giving you the courtesy of letting you know ahead of time. Um, but I have a lot to cover. I'm going to try to get through it as quickly as I can. Um, <clears throat> I'm waiting for the rain to come this morning. <laughs> We're still waiting on rain, and uh, they, they're expecting scattered storms. Well, I heard the thunder, I heard the lightning, and it got really dark, and I thought, oh, yay, we're going to get poured upon, and we desperately need rain here. Well, we had about 50 dro drops on the sidewalk in front of my porch. That was it. So, hopefully tonight we'll get that those thunderstorms that they were promising. It did thunder and it lightened and I got so excited and nothing. But, that's how it goes in Wisconsin. Okay, what you are looking at here, hopefully you can see all of these. Uh, I'm going to bring them closer to the camera as we move through this video. Like I said, I've got a lot to cover. And uh, I'm going to try and do it very quickly. I want to start with my um, Ruby Cascade. Just, would you just, is, is that not breathtaking? And I can probably take this tag out now because I know it just looks awful. I hate it, but I have such bad, um, you know, memory problems that I... I could be looking at a spider plant that I've had for 40 some years and forget what it is. So I have to just leave these tags in most of them so that uh, I don't forget. I mean, I don't, I never forget, but I, I get, you know, a lapse for that moment when I need to talk and tell you what it is. So you just forgive the ugliness of that. But isn't she beautiful otherwise? This was one of those finds that my husband brought home for me and what I did is I took this the story behind this is I, I got this plant from uh, Suzette from Suzette's Gardens a long I, oh gosh it's at least a year ago and it was a very tiny cutting I think it was like three or four pieces and and yeah she sent that along with a bunch of other plants and <clears throat> I could not get this plant to do anything I managed to keep it alive, but that was it. Then I moved her into um, a plastic pot, which I can't seem to get a hold of here. I wanted to show that to you. There's a pot inside of here, a little plastic pot. And I, I moved her, that whole thing, in, into this. And I put her in my living room in front of my west window, um, where I also have... Uh, some LED lighting and she just took off as you can see there's a ton of growth so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of her um, I'm going to take two actually one I'm going to put on my uh, propagation medium which is perlite I wetted this down ahead of time earlier this morning I let it soak to make sure it, it's good and wet and I will leave the cover off for the first day because I think I may have even put a little too much water in here. Um, so I'm going to leave the cover off, but I do have a cover with a little bit of air venting. This was from, I don't know, something from the deli. It, you know, chicken maybe, I think. I don't know. But I think that most of my propagations are going to go in here. Um... Uh, I seem to have the best luck with either water or um, perlite when it comes to propagating leaves. So this one I just want to try. I don't know what's going to happen, but let's do that and get that out of the way right away. And then we can move on to the next thing. First thing we're going to do is Spray very spray down really good my snippers 
and you do this to avoid getting any kind of bacteria and also spreading disease. I don't always remember, but you really should do it in between each plant because if you have one plant that's got disease and you don't do it, then you could spread it. So, all right, I'm going to take one of these strands since I have so much to work with now. Just in case something were to happen to her, I just... And I'm just going to snip it right here. And there's little tiny nodes going along this stem. And it's my belief that everywhere there's a leaf coming out of there is a potential for roots. Okay? So we're going to just spread that across here. And I may have to... I may have to secure it with pins. And we can do that later. Um, okay. And then one of these I'm going to take and put in a, a water vase, which I have here. I do believe that you can root these in water. In fact, I know that you can. I just don't know if I... I don't believe that I have tried this in the past, so... And always remember that the side that you're putting in water is the side that you cut. That's the bottom. If you try to put it in the other way, it's not going to work not going to root. It isn't going to root from the top. Let's put one more in there. I did notice something else in my in my um, plant endeavors is it seems like if I put just one cutting in water they seem to have a harder time rooting. I, I seem to have better luck with more than one when you put more than one in. So, I know that doesn't look like much right now, but it, it I'm pretty sure this is going to rot. So, we're going to set that aside. And we're going to set her aside. Okay, uh, the next one that I want to talk about is my um, Peperomia tricolor. She's Clusifolia is what it is, and I don't know if she's either a Jenny or a Jelly. I can't, I can never remember which one she is, but at any rate, she's another Peperomia, and she has been struggling a little bit. I've had her in my south window, and she was doing really well all winter, but come summer, she started to... Ooh, I just heard thunder. But the sun is shining, so I don't know. <coughs> okay, and as you can see... Oh, there's her, there's her thing. Um, yep, she's a Jenny. Okay, I think. That's what I have marked on here. All right, at any rate... You can see that there's several different stems in here. Now I have a soon-to-be son-in-law who is going, he's, he's starting to, um, oops, I got an extra piece here. Let's stick that right in there. He is becoming a fan of succulents, and I gave him a uh, peperomia, I'm sorry, a pilea peperomoides, peperomioides, a while back, and I think he's still got it. But anyway, he, um, I wanted to take some cuttings from these, especially my, one of these other ones that I'm going to show you in a minute, and I wanted, I asked my granddaughter if he would, um, 
if he would like some of these cuttings, and he said yes. And I think I may have called him son-in-law. He's actually a grandson-in-law, or about to be a grandson-in-law. If they get married, they're in the process of setting the date, I guess. But At any rate, um, so I'm going to give him some cuttings of this. This one, this is my obtusifolia, variegated. Um, I have given several cuttings of these. I know I gave at least one, if not two, of these to my daughter. I think I gave her one last year or the year before, and I just gave her another one, which she rooted up in water, and she was so very proud of herself because as much as she loves plants and wants to be a good plant mom, she just struggled for so long without just not knowing what to do and forgetting even after I told her and you know I said don't be so hard on yourself you're doing good you just gotta you gotta keep on it you know you gotta and that goes for any you know plant mom I mean I there's many times that I brought plants home and I looked up the care even, even though I was pretty sure what I had to do to keep them thriving um, I still looked them up because we do forget and things do change and I know there's things that I learned years ago that are not correct and they have proved it over the years so don't be so hard on yourself is my point okay now I'm going to wipe this off once again although that there were definitely no signs of any problems with that ruby cascade, that's for sure. Okay. <clears throat> now, I'm not sure what I want to do with this one. Um, like I said, I did just cut a piece off for my granddaughter. But I think what I'm going to do is just do some leaf cuttings in my, in my um, tray here. These root up in water very easily. They root up in soil. I mean, you can literally take one of these stems cut it stick it in soil and it will root but i wanted to see how it would work in the in the um tray because i want to make more than one cutting and as you can see there are some new shoots coming up since i cut that old one off there's new shoots coming in this i don't know what this is this is not part of the plant that's weird <laughs> that's plastic <laughs> okay so there's a little leaf here, there's new growth here, and I can see a little bit of uh, um, damage on the end of the leaf. So before I cut that, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this forward because I want to talk about this a little bit. Some of you will remember that I got this at Walmart, and it was... It wasn't doing very well. I brought it home and pretty much brought it back to life. She was doing really good for a while, and then all of a sudden, she started acting up. And I could not figure out what was wrong with her. So, I, I and, and in between all that, I got the thrip. So, I assumed that was what was causing the damage. So, I got rid of the thrips, and I took this plant, and I put her in a bag and I took her and put her in my laundry room in front of an east window and she started getting tons of new growth she's got a ton of new growth in inside of here you can see the little little tiny shoots coming up hopefully you can see that <coughs> But she is, um, as you can see, she looks like somebody had her for lunch. Well, I had forgotten, again, that this damage is almost always caused by lack of calcium or magnesium. So... Because I didn't notice this was going on, because I had her in the bag, I only had the bag partially open, and I'd go in and water her, and when I watered my spider plants, and I thought, oh, she's getting all kinds of new growth. But upon closer inspection, I found, yep, she's getting new growth all right, but something's eating her. Well, that's not what's going on. That is a, 
calcium magnesium deficiency and the way that we fix that is with um, well first of all let me say the way I know that is because even the new growth has it it's not an environmental thing if it was it wouldn't be you wouldn't be getting it on the new very tiny growth so <clears throat> I will be so as not to create her any more stress I'm not going to repot her I do want to take see if I can find one or two healthy leaves on her hopefully and um, put her in my perlite here and try to start another plant but then I'm going to have to do a treatment and the way I do that is I take a tablespoon of Epsom salt which you can buy at any any store really drugstore Walmart uh, grocery store everybody carries it just plain old Epsom salt I take a tablespoon of that I put it in an empty gallon jug and I put a little hot water in it just a little to kind of melt it I shake it up really good and make sure it's you know stirred up and then I add room temperature water to it so one tablespoon of Epsom salt to one gallon of water <clears throat> and then I water depending on the damage um, this plant I'm probably going to do at least two if not three of the next waterings when it's time to water I will be doing with the Epsom salt now I have done the same thing on my peace lily and brought her back from the dead I mean she was down to a few leaves and that was what the the issue was and when I realized it I, I watered her with the Epsom salt water and she started coming back and now she's big and beautiful and uh, periodically she will get uh, her leaves will start getting uh, translucent, you know, where you can almost see through them. And that's usually a calcium or magnesium problem, deficiency. So, I have a few other plants that are showing that sign as well. So I'm going to mix up a gallon of that, and that's what I'm going to water. Like I said, I'll probably do the next two or three. Usually I start with one watering and maybe one more after that, after she dries out a little bit. And then if I don't see an improvement, I might do a third. But usually one or two Epsom waterings will fix the problem. All right. Um, I also wanted to mention, I don't know if I did that, this plant will grow across the, the, the soil where there's nodes. If, if I had this in a long pot, she'd be shooting up plants from each place where there's a leaf. So she's a pretty versatile plant. Um, I'd like to get her to stand up straight again, but I don't think that's going to happen. So I'm probably just going to cut that off and root her. <coughs> but, okay, now let's get to this one here. I know I said it's going to be a long video, but I, I don't want it to be t two hours long. This is my polybotria Polybotrys, Polybotria, I think it is, um, Peperomia. It's a, it's also called a teardrop or a raindrop. Look at the size of the leaves on this, folks. I mean, they're huge. And I got this at the same time as I got that watermelon Peperomia um, at Walmart. <coughs> But she was, she, she didn't look well. She, she had, I don't know, she was just really wonky looking. And so I was a little leery about bringing her home. But I did bring her home. I put her in a plastic bag. I left her in there for about two weeks to make sure that she didn't have any kind of pest, you know, problems. And she didn't. So... I brought her home. I gave a cutting to Suzette, and hers, I think, is growing really nicely, too. It's been a while, but I, she <clears throat> had sent me a picture a while ago and let me know that it was doing really well. And this one's got new babies coming up from the soil right here, so I'm excited about that. Now, I want to take a cutting for... Um, 
my family member here and I I'm not quite sure where I want to do that. Now this one too has a little bit of as you can see this starting. So I'm going to give her a, a, a little um, Epsom salt treatment too. See when you see that coming out on new growth that's that's a pretty good sign that that's what that is. And it may be from something else, but if it is, I'm not aware of it. <clears throat> and I've had these, <clears throat> excuse me, for quite some time, so I would say that's probably the issue. All right, now, <clears throat> let's, I'm going to wipe this up one more time. And <clears throat> I want to start with... The peperomia. I want to see. I may not need both of these trays either, but I didn't want to run out. I want to try to find. <clears throat> I always say when I do propagation, I try to get the teenager. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I try to get the teenager. I don't. I don't want the babies, and I don't want the the elderly because. The middle-aged ones do the best. In this case, I'm not sure what's what here because of all the damaged leaves. But here's a pretty good, pretty good leaf. So I am going to snip that one off. And I'm going to do it all the way down to the crown. Now... This plant will not, oh, well, that's sad, but we'll use it. This plant is not like um, other plants where when you cut them, they're going to, you know, spread out at the end of that, of this stem that was left on there. So no point in just cutting off part of it and hoping that you're going to get new growth there because you won't. So you might as well just take it all the way down to the crown of the plant. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I saw an experiment done a while back on YouTube. And it was a scientific experiment. And they did um, the, the roots as far as which one rooted the fastest. If it was the top half of the leaf, the whole leaf, or the bottom half. And it was the top half, believe it or not. So, that kind of surprised me. I would think the whole leaf would do the best. But that wasn't the case in their experiment. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the majority of this off. And I'm going to cut across the width of the plant. I'm going to try to get the middle. And everywhere where there's a vein has the potential of producing roots. So we want to put the cut end down. And you want to always put the cut end down. Let me see if I can get this closer to you so that you can actually see what I'm doing. And you don't want to bury the whole leaf. And you probably already know that. Well, uh -huh. I don't have enough so that it's standing up because if it's laying in there, chances are it's going to rot. Alright, now we're going to put the bottom half in. Okay.
went to cut that off. And I'm going to cut that off. Make a little divot down in there. Now I should mention at this point that you can use any kind of medium for these. You can use sphagnum moss, you can use soil, you can use vermiculite, uh, pumice, um, pretty much anything. Anything that will hold moisture. <coughs> does not have to be perlite. Okay. I want to do one more row of these. I think I got a pretty good leaf right here. Pretty sturdy and pretty good size. I'm going to cut off the stem. Now I know people that have, you know, you can, you can do these in water too, folks. You can put it in a glass of water and it'll rot. If you're going to do the water propagation, I would do more than, more than one at a time in a jar. And I think. I think I heard a while ago I think it was with this plant that <clears throat> if you don't let if you do, try to do a, a stem cutting and you don't let it callous over before you put it in the water that the juice from the from the stem will actually poison the water I don't know if that was this plant or the polybatria. I think it was the teardrop. But, and, and again, it's something I heard. I'm, I'm passing that on to you. Don't know if it's true or not. Um, and I'm a little reluctant to say things when I don't know for sure. But, you know, I'm, I'm bringing it to your attention if you want to do further research on it just to satisfy your own curiosity you can do that right <clears throat> so hoarse today um the the <clears throat> really really <clears throat> dry air has been really done a number on everybody including me i'm going to just excuse myself a second here sip of coffee might help. Okay. I don't normally like to slurp on things when I'm recording, but sometimes it can't be helped. So hopefully you'll excuse me for that. All right. I don't know. I've got a whole nother tray there. Maybe I should maybe I should do one more one more row just to Let's do one more. Just cutting this down. And I'm not doing a, a water propagation on these because I have too many water propagations going on now of other plants. And I only have so much room. Now, if I'm successful, 
Each one of these should produce a plant with at least one, if not several, leaves. Or a little clump of leaves. So, we'll see. to get it just right but I think we did it hmm I thought maybe I could bury that stem just a little bit to hold it down as opposed to having to put pins in it. We'll see how that works. I'm excited really about that one because I've never done that before, so I'm excited to see if it works. All right. <coughs> now, I do have a bottle here with just water in it and normally at this point I would be spraying it but because uh, I really wet that perlite I'm just going to leave this open until the end of the day and then I'll probably cover her up but this is going to go on top and as you can see there's a some little bit of air holes in here which is good it won't dry out too fast but it will allow a little bit of air in there and we'll worry about closing it later but <clears throat> I do want it to dry out a little bit because I think I put a little too much water in it earlier okay now <clears throat> the other thing if I haven't already mentioned you want to make sure that you keep these cuttings in a bright light they have to have bright light, not direct light, but bright light. <clears throat> okay. I'm just going to put, I think, one or two of each of these in this tray because I really don't want to... Um, Oh, let me think a second. I had I had a thought in my head that I was going to do, <clears throat> but I'm not uh, I'm not sure if I should do that or not now. Let me think. Give me a moment. I do want to do at least at least one leaf. Probably shouldn't have cut that there. And you'll see that I have stone. <clears throat> this is river rock. And I just liked the way that it looked on here. And it seemed to protect this plant from everything that my other plants went through. <clears throat> this one was unfazed by it all. So who knows if that was the reason. All right. <clears throat> yes, I am going to I'm going to cut this. Cuz I really don't like the way it's hanging over the pot. And you know what? I'm going to get really brave here. This is going to hurt, folks. I'm going to cut right here above this new leaf, okay? Hopefully you can see that. Ooh. That was hard. That was really hard to do. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm going to cut these bottom leaves. I'm going to take off the bottom, I don't know, four, five, maybe even six leaves off the bottom of this plant. Okay. 
and I'm going to put them in the perlite and then I'm going to stick the top piece back in this pot and I'm pretty sure it's going to rub. So here we go. <clears throat> and Trisha, if you're watching this, take really good care of that cutting I gave you just in case you might have to give your mama a cutting. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a, a, a something new for you, huh? Okay. Now <clears throat> she's kind of curled over there and I don't know. That's kind of a long cutting. I'm wondering if I should make two cuttings out of this. I'm kind of afraid if I leave this this long, it's going to have a hard time. So it's a lot of leaves on there, isn't it? All right. What have we got here? I'm going to cut this right here. And I think I might I might use a little rooting powder on this one. And I don't know anyone that has proven yet that Rooting powder makes a difference, but it's one of those things. And it reminds me of many years ago when my granddaughter was very little baby. And she was sick. And my daughter took her to a doctor. And she had a very, very good doctor. And uh, he, he actually has since passed away from a... He was riding his bicycle along a country road and somebody hit him and killed him and oh my goodness the whole the whole county was in such mourning over that uh, he was such a good doctor and he had a lot of common sense along with his medical training which is very hard to find today by the way um, so he was my granddaughter's, my older granddaughter's baby doctor, and then he was my next granddaughter's doc baby doctor, and then he was my great grandson's baby doctor until, until that happened. Oh my goodness! Anyways, I'm running into something here. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. Um. He told her, because she said, if, she said, well, it helped to rub Vicks on her. He was, she was talking about her daughter. And his answer to that was, if it makes you feel better to do that, then go right ahead. And that was his very kind way of saying, it's not going to fix the problem, but we know moms love to use Vicks and, you know, it might help to help him breathe a little bit better, but he wasn't in. That was the only time I think that I really didn't agree with him because I know myself whenever I've had a lung issue if I put Vicks on it seems to have to open up the airways a little bit but anyway enough about that. Okay I'm going to cut these leaves off the bottom because we can't stick that in there with those on there Yep, still too many. Folks, this is killing me. And it's probably not making you real happy either. It, it's hard to watch, but I do know that the end result will be fantastic. So I just have to keep telling myself that. I'm going to cut this. See, here's another one that... 
it's got signs of calcium deficiency. So I'm thinking probably all my plants could benefit from a, a good dose of that. All right. I'm going to stick this one in here. Now there is soil underneath here. I'm running into something. It's been in this pot for at least a year. It probably could use a repotting. But I have so many plants that need so much attention right now that I, I just can't take the time to do that. But I will give her some calcium and magnesium via the, the uh, Epsom salt. And I think that'll help her a lot. Okay. Well, there she is. That's that's it for that. Got to move along here. We're getting along. I can feel it. <sighs> All right. Now these we we don't cut. These we just stick in, stick down in there. And I'm gonna put them sideways so I can put the cover on eventually. And I should be able to get a new plant from each one of these leaves. And if I do, I can already hear you, Trisha. I want another one, and you definitely can have one. I gotta cut this a little shorter. I that doesn't want to stand up. We do not want it to lay down flat because it will it'll rot. And make sure you got them standing up. And if they won't stand up, then it's because they're too their stem is too long. And put the rooting powder. That's okay. I honestly, I'm not sure that that even does anything. I think it makes us feel better because we did everything we could. But all right. Oh, you know, I wonder. I'm gonna ask you guys. Somebody that I used to watch all the time, um, Alicia A. And I know that she had, um, I believe it was a brain tumor, or it was, I think it was a brain tumor. She had she had surgery on her on her head, and then she came back for a while, and. Her last video was very vague, but she said she's not gone. She's just, she just won't be here for a little while. And that was quite a long time ago, and she's been on my mind. Alicia A. Simply Alicia A, I think her, her whole title was. Very nice lady. She had a couple kids. She was a Sunday school teacher. Just to give you a little background in case you to jog your memory there. And if anybody knows what happened to her, I, I think um, uh, Pammy's Plenty Things, if you're watching this, if I'm if my memory serves me right, didn't you run into her in person at one time? If I'm off the beam, just let me know, but I'm, I'm almost positive I heard you say that in one of your videos. Um, if you're still in touch with her and you know if she's okay, could you let me know on uh, Instagram? Just shoot me a, a DM and let me know what, if she's okay. Cause she's really been on my mind a lot. All right. There we go. Wow, it almost looks like a 
edible pie, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Now, okay, now we got her done. This is really getting dirty here. This one I'm just going to cut and stick back right back down in this soil. And then at some point when uh, my grandson-in-law is, well, when these start to root and I'm ready to send these over, then I will pull one of these one of these out and cut it off the main root system. But in the meantime, then I don't have to make a special spot for this one. I can just put it back down in the soil and, and watch it grow until such time as he comes for his for his uh, his plants. Okay, where do I want to cut this now? I gotta pay attention to what I'm doing here so I don't mess this up. I think maybe right here. Or do I want to cut the big one? Mm. <laughs> what to do, what to do? I'm trying to cut a piece of that where I have to cut the least amount of leaves off of her. Like right here I could cut it. Right here. But then I'd have to cut these leaves off to have enough stem to put in the soil. And I'm trying not to do that. But if I cut this one, then I have to cut out that big leaf. Nope, maybe not. Let's see, where is she coming in? Oh. oh, yeah, see? My big beauties. Oh, this one's going to hurt. But you know what? She's got a new plant coming on underneath here, so maybe I should do that so she gets more light. All right, let's do that so we can be done now. These plants, they're not really true succulents. They're like a semi-succulent, I guess you would call it. I don't know. Succulent-like. And you know that because the, it's got the thick leaves and the thick stems that hold water. So it's important to let these get a little bit on the dry side. You don't want to let them dry out completely. Although, my the uh, my variegated obtusifolia... There's been times when I didn't water her for a month and a half, and she was just fine. So, it, again, it depends on your atmosphere. You all know that by now if you've been watching me. And, but you, the quickest way to kill these plants is to overwater. So you don't want to do that. Boy, oh boy, I am going to cut this off the top, you know. Because she's getting very tall, and I don't like tall, leggy plants. Oh, yeah, look. I mean, there's nothing here. Oh, I don't want to cut that whole stem off, though. Here. If I cut her up here, she's going to get thicker up on top, and I don't want to do that either. So, hey. well, I think that is what I'm going to have to do. Well, she's got some new growth in here so 
maybe I'll just cut this one. I think I will. There's a V here, so this, if I cut here, it will um, spread out. It'll get thicker down here, so let's do that. Cut it on an angle. Oh, that hurt. Hey. <laughs> All my big leaved ones, which I did not want to do, but oh well. Uh, I'm going to cut those off and propagate those in the perlite. That's what's left. I'm going to stick her right back down in the soil. I'll put her right here. And that'll be the start for the one that I'm going to give away. And most likely. Now, the thing of it is, whenever you do cuttings like this, if you are putting a non-rooted piece in a pot with a rooted piece, they're going to take up water differently. So that's why a lot of people don't like to root plants that way. It's a little difficult to keep that water regulated properly for both pieces. But I've had very good luck with, with that, depending on the plant. There are some plants that I wouldn't attempt to do that with, but this is not one of them. So we're just going to... We're going to give this one a little bit of water. I'm going to actually do that right now so I don't forget. And... And hope for the best. I'm going to put her back in the east window. I'm going to give her some uh, calcium, some Epsom salt watering the next time she needs water. And then she'll be good to go. And oh my goodness, look at the size of these leaves. I mean, it's, it's just, my nails are all full of mud. Look, look at, it's as big as my hand. Gorgeous and healthy and leathery. It's just, ooh, okay. So, I'm going to cut this. Right up by the stem. And I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to stick these right in the middle. And you know... I guess worst case scenario, I just have to wait for the plant to produce more of that. It's not the end of the world. I know it hurts. It really killed me to do that. I think I'm just trying to make myself feel better here, folks. I'm going to, I think she's pretty full. <clears throat> See if we got room here. It'll be really wonderful if all of these root. 
I will be so incredibly happy if that happens. <clears throat> and I'll definitely bring it to you. She'll fit down in there. <clears throat> done. I am not going to propagate. Oh, I have one more here I'll do. I'm not going to propagate this one today folks. I She's looking a little peaked and I just don't want to stress her out anymore. I'm going to get her out of the sun. I'll give her a little Epsom drink and uh, possibly even put her in a bigger pot. I don't know. Uh, one of the things I want to say here is I, I, I don't want to forget to talk about the care. Um, most peperomias like bright light. Um, bright indirect light. And they also, like I said, you can kill them real quickly by overwatering them. So you just want to wait until they're, you know... Not completely dry, but about, I don't know, halfway down in the pot, depending on the size of the pot. The other thing to remember is they, most peperomias have very fine roots and a very small root ball. They, they, and they like to be root bound. They love to be root bound. That is when I get the growth. I can probably guess this plant has a lot of roots in it. And that's when it started shooting up the babies out of the soil. And that's true with a lot of plants. Uh, when they start getting rip on, instead of growing long, they start shooting up more plants. So that's another, just a little bit of information for you. So this one very well could um, need to be repotted, but because these plants like to be pot bound, I'm not in any hurry to do that. I want to figure out what's going on with her first. She's pretty sad looking. She shouldn't look like this. She shouldn't be dull. So well, I'm going to give her some Epsom and get her out of that bright light and uh, out of that direct sun. Let's see what's going on. Okay. All right. That will be it for my, my repotting. Um, I will periodically just... Whoops. Wrong one. <laughs> With just plain water, periodically you just go through and give it a squirt like that. A little longer than that, of course, uh, to keep this moist. And then I will put the cover on. And then after about two weeks, I'm going to go and check. And you can check by just pulling on it a little bit. And it gives you resistance. Then you know that you've got roots starting under there. I have seen these root in perlite in a matter of a week or two. I've also seen it take a couple months. So I think a lot depends on, again, on your atmosphere, uh, how much you water it, the light you're giving it, and, and whatnot. So um, I'll, I'll be bringing an update here shortly, and I'll let you know how she's doing, or how they're doing, I should say. I'm going to stick these in that other pan here and I'll the video but there we go that'll be it I want to thank you all for coming um, and I really really want to thank my viewers I'm I'm so grateful for all of you and I'm I'm so excited when I hear from you in the comments section even if it's just one or two sentences, so 
that I know you're enjoying it and um, so thank you to again to those who who are doing that um, and I hope to continue to, to put, bring you more videos in the future okay in the meantime you all take care I'm sure I'll be back before the weekend and uh Father's Day coming up, so. All right. Thank you again all for coming. Have a good day. Bye now.